Does Dirac Live kill your base? I have heard this from a lot of people, and I have also experienced it for myself. After you run Dirac Live, you've got the auto calibration, everything should be dialed in, everything should sound great, you crank it up, and your base is completely anemic, just totally neutered. Nobody wants that. Everybody wants bass that punches, that hits hard, that shakes the room, right? Why does Dirac Live do this? Also, more importantly, how do you fix it? In this video, I'm going to cover the four absolutely critical steps that you need to do to fix the bass after running Dirac Live. So the question is, why does Dirac Live do this? Now, I don't think this is unique to Dirac Live. I've also heard similar complaints about Odyssey. I've also experienced it with Odyssey, also with Arc Genesis. They all seem to just kind of make the bass kind of, kind of flat, right? Just kind of meh. And at first I was confused by this. I'm like, why, why would they do this? No, nobody wants lame bass, right? Like everybody wants bass that punches hard. But after thinking about it for a while, here's my theory. My theory is that they set it at a neutral level because everybody's tastes are going to be different. It's kind of like if you ordered eggs at a restaurant and they're like, oh, salt, salt on eggs is good. Everybody loves salt on eggs. And then they just really just salted the heck out of those eggs and they brought them out to you. And you're like, uh, I don't like this much salt on my eggs. This is, this is not good. Well, now you've got to remove the salt from the eggs, right? Conversely, imagine if they cook the eggs and they're like, hey, everybody likes salt. We'll sprinkle a little bit of salt on there. But once you get it, if you want more salt, you prefer more salt, then you can add it, right? And if you don't, then you don't have to. So I think this might be, might be why uh, the room calibration and auto correction software programs kind of tend to do this, where they just kind of make it kind of neutral because then you can go in and adjust it to your taste. Well, how do you do that? Well, today in this video, we're going to discuss how to do this specifically for Dirac Live. So the first step, the first thing you have to do is before you run Dirac Live, set your volume slightly below where you plan to keep your volume at. Now for me personally, I tend to run the volume or gain on my subwoofer to be about at the 50% mark, about halfway, sometimes maybe a little bit above 50%, but, but not much. I, I don't want to overdrive my drivers and, and cause any damage. So I, I tend to keep it at about 50%, maybe slightly above. So when I run Dirac Live, before I run Dirac Live, I take that gain knob or volume knob, depending on how it's labeled on your particular subwoofer, I set that knob just slightly below where I plan to run it. So if I'm planning to run it about 50%, I'll move it down to like, say, 40%. I'll just, I'll just dial it back a bit. And what this does is when you run the room correction and Direct Live creates those test tones and then it measures it with your microphone, it's going to measure the volume or the SPL level. SPL level. It's like a sound pressure level. Sound SPL. It's going to measure the SPL, the output of your subwoofer. And if you've dialed it back just a little bit, it's going to measure that. And then it's going to respond by saying, okay, we need to bump this up just a little bit because it's a little bit down. So we're going to bump it up instead of uh, bumping it down. It's like, say you, say you turn the volume up a little bit too much, it's going to dial it back. You don't want that. So this is going to give Dirac Live, uh, it's going to make Dirac Live kind of boost it a little bit all the way, uh, right, right from the get go. And then obviously after you run Dirac Live and you get everything all calibrated, then you're going to turn the volume up and set it where, where you actually want to run it. But that's the first step is to set the volume just slightly below where you plan to keep it. So after you run Dirac Live, the program creates a target curve where it sets the level for all of the frequencies. And typically it's pretty flat. So what you need to do is go into the program and then boost those low frequencies up a few dB. I usually do about three dB, but again, 
this comes down to taste. So you can you can boost it 3 dB, 4 dB, 5 dB. I, I probably wouldn't go much more than six. That that might be pushing it. Um, but it's it's up to you where where in that range you you want to boost the target curve. So now you have it's sometimes called like a house curve. This where it's boosted at the lower frequencies and then it drops off a bit once you get into the higher frequencies. So that's that's what you want to go for. You want to you want to boost those lower frequencies so that your bass is going to hit harder. The third thing is you're going to then go into the specific channel levels. Now, now this is this is critical. I, this is this is important. There's two different ways you can adjust the bass level. One way is the right way and one way is the wrong way. And I will explain. If you go into the on-screen menu display, so you've got your receiver on, you, you click the, the menu button, you scroll down to the levels, you open up the levels menu. It's going to then create a test tone at every single channel. And you can, you can click through the different channels and you'll hear the test tone coming through. Scroll down until you get to the subwoofer level. And then it will have set, after running Direct Live, it will have set that subwoofer level at some point on that spectrum. And typically it will have dialed it back. At least it's done that in my case. I mean, it, it, I've seen it dial it back seven, eight, nine dB. What you wanna do is boost that up. You're going to push it up a few dB. Now, in my case, I boosted it up to negative 2.5, but that's that's it's going to be different in every room. I wouldn't go too far into the positive because then you're going to be boosting it beyond uh, where where it may be safe to drive it because these all of these things that we're doing are going to accumulate they, each one is they're, they're going to stack on top of each other and so if you if you boost one you know like oh i need to boost it up to plus six well you've already boosted the target curve you're already going to be boosting the the volume like all of these things are going to stack on top of each other so you so you want to just make a small adjustment to each one and then as they stack on top of each other the cumulative effect will be significant so Boost it a few dB on this on this levels uh, option in, in the menu. Now, that's the right way to do it. The wrong way to do it is to go into the app. Now, I have the Onkyo app on my phone, and I use that app all the time. It's very, very helpful. And in that app, you have uh, a few options to boost, like uh, the treble, the bass, vocals, dialogue, etc. And then there's also an option to boost the subwoofer. It looks identical to the one that's on the on-screen display. And in fact, it is set at the level that is on the on-screen display. So you say, well, why can't I just adjust it there? Here's why. Because that adjustment is temporary. Onkyo, the Onkyo receiver will adjust it back down to whatever is set in the, the menu option, the one that you set on the on-screen display. It adjusts it back uh, for weird reasons. So. I'm listening to music on my Apple TV in the music app. I'm in that, I switch over to uh, Netflix. And, and while I'm listening to music, I boost that on my phone in the app. I boost it up a few dB. Yeah, it sounds good. I like that. Okay, it sounds good. I switch over to Netflix. I open up a, a movie, an ad plays. And when the ad ends and then the movie starts in that transition period, it will just automatically adjust back to whatever is set on the on-screen display. And so it doesn't stay there. It's it's like it's like a temporary adjustment. Ankyo seems to look at it as though, "Oh, I just want to temporarily adjust the the subwoofer just just right right now. I don't want it to stay that way. I just want to do it for just while what I'm doing right now." And then you change anything. You move to a different app, you start streaming a different uh video or song, you move to a different input, say you're using your Apple, Apple TV and then you switch over to like a Zidoo, it's going to just revert back to whatever is set on that on-screen display setting. That's why you want to basically kind of hard code it into the on-screen display setting and then that will be its default setting. That's where it will always revert to is whatever you set there. And the fourth and final thing to do to really increase your bass is to enable bass control. 
This is when you run Dirac Live, after you run Dirac Live and you adjust that target curve over in the upper right hand corner, there's an option to enable base control. Now, this is a little confusing. There's two different base management options in Dirac Live. There's base control, which is free. It comes with Dirac Live. And then there's the base management, which is, I think it's either a $200 or a $300 upgrade. So I need to make a quick correction here. I stated that base control was included and base management was the upgrade. It's actually reversed. Base management is the one that's included. Base control is the upgrade. Now, in my defense, in the phone app, it says base control because I, I enabled, when, after I ran, ran Direct Live, I enabled base management. And so it shows up in that particular profile, in profile one. And so it specifies that I'm running the base, the base management uh, option. And in the app, it says base control, but really it's base management. So if you're completely confused at this point, don't worry, it, it's fine. Just run Direct Live and just select the one that's available there, the one that says base management. But base management, that's, that's the purchase upgrade. Base control is the one that comes with Direct Live. So that's what I use is base control. So I enable base control. Now, what does base control do? Base control is where it really fine tunes uh, the crossovers. So it's going to, when it takes all of the sound measurements from all your speakers, it's going to determine how low your speakers can go. And then it's going to very intelligently set the crossovers so that your speakers blend seamlessly with your sub. It's also going to adjust things like phase alignment and time delay and a whole host of other things. It's very technical, but basically it makes it so that your speakers and your subwoofer or subwoofers play nicely together. It's a more cohesive unit as opposed to speakers and the sub. It's, it's kind of makes it all in one. So enable bass control. So basically you've got three different settings that you can, you can adjust that kind of basically have like slider bars. Uh, you've got the, you've got the uh, target curve that you can drag up and down. You've got the base adjust that you can drag across. And then you also have the volume on your subwoofer. So after, after, you know, you've run everything, you, you still have that option to, you know, kind of tweak and gently adjust the, the volume on your subwoofer. So with those three things, you can really, really create a high impact bass environment where the bass is going to hit hard. And that's what I've done in my tiny theater, because that's where I have my Onkyo. Um, just straight out of the box, the bass is non-existent. But after making all of these adjustments, I've got it where it punches hard and it's basically a near field sub. It's just right behind my main listening position and it, it shakes and it's awesome. So go try those out and thanks for watching.